Seven, six, five, four, three, two. In 1904, atomic weapons testing. Eniwetok Atoll is located 2,700 miles southwest of Hawaii and 390 miles northwest of Kwajalein. It is a typical coral atoll with a lagoon about 25 miles in diameter surrounded by 40 islands. Before relocation, the Eniwetok people were divided into two communities. The Anjibi people lived in the north and the Eniwetok people in the south. The people were relocated to Ujilang Atoll, 124 miles to the southwest. From 1948 to 1958, 43 nuclear tests were conducted on Eniwetok Atoll. On this chart, the numbers shown indicate the location and number of ground zeroes. Most of the tests were conducted in the northeast quadrant, leaving these islands the most heavily contaminated. During the 1972 Micronesian status negotiations, the Eniwetok people, whose population had grown to over 400, became more insistent for return to their native land. Ujilang Atoll did not offer comparative food resources, having only one-eighth the land area and one-fifteenth the lagoon area of Eniwetok. In April 1972, Ambassador Hayden Williams announced the U.S. would return jurisdiction of the atoll to the trust territory of the Pacific Islands government for eventual resettlement of the Eniwetok people after its cleanup. In July 1972, the Defense Nuclear Agency was directed by the Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs to initiate planning for the project on the basis that the Department of Defense would conduct the proposed cleanup with technical assistance from the Atomic Energy Commission. Later, a directive issued by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, designating the director as the DOD project manager for the cleanup. In order to properly plan for the return of the Eniwetok people to the atoll, it was necessary to conduct both an engineering and radiological survey to determine existing conditions. Based on these surveys, the DNA survey was concerned with the physical condition of the island. An inventory of the work to be done was made, and estimates were prepared of what it would cost to remove and dispose of hazardous debris and materials, including those with harmful radioactivity. The AEC Radiological Survey is a comprehensive inventory of radiological conditions. It provides the basis for recommendations concerning permissible residual radioactivity with related living patterns and proposals for acceptable sites and methods for disposal of contaminated materials. The Department of the Interior Master Plan shows where the people will live, the types of houses they will live in, and where they may obtain their food. Eniwetok is the most highly developed island and is free of contamination from radioactive materials. It has an 8,000 foot runway and is the only island presently occupied. Located here is a small DNA caretaker operation as well as a marine biology laboratory under contract to the Atomic Energy Commission. A Coast Guard Loran station is also located on this island. Any Weetok Island will be the support base for the cleanup. Restoration of key facilities will be required. This will be a considerable effort since many of the facilities required for the cleanup are in an advanced state of deterioration. Some examples of structural debris to be removed are abandoned equipment and structures along the shoreline as well as on the island. These are safety hazards and may impede full use of the limited atoll land area by the Eniwetok people. No significant radioactive contamination exists on Japtan Island 
where the people will initially reside upon their return. On this island, there are numerous structures and deteriorated buildings that must be removed. There are some buildings that are in relatively good condition, so they'll be left for use by the Eniwetok people. Medrin was the major scientific island during testing. It also has no significant radioactive contamination and has the largest number of hazardous structures to be removed. It is estimated there are some 125,000 cubic yards or about 2,000 carloads of non-radioactive debris and 6,300 cubic yards or 100 carloads of radioactive material on the atoll requiring removal and disposal. The Eniwetok people are intelligent and resourceful, but untrained and unskilled in the industrial arts. They have the capacity as a people to assimilate the skills necessary to perform many of the cleanup tasks. But they do not now possess the resources to operate and maintain the tools and equipment required to dismantle, stockpile, and dispose of the debris on the islands. The objective of keeping their exposure to radiation sources on the atoll to the absolute minimum is an important consideration, particularly since the Eniwetok people must live and earn their livelihood from the atoll for the remainder of their lives. Enjibi Island was the principal residence of the Enjibi people prior to relocation. The level of residual radioactivity prohibits their near-term residence here. Numerous concrete pads throughout the island must be removed as they are obstructions to future agricultural uses. The AEC will begin test plantings as soon as practicable. This massive concrete test structure must also be removed. It is anticipated that the Enjibi people may be able to reside on the island within 30 years, and perhaps as soon as 10 years. Runnet Island, once covered with coconut trees, is now not only littered with large amounts of debris, but is also the island having the highest residual radioactivity. It is the only island which the people will be prohibited from visiting. The two craters will be used for entombment of radioactive debris collected throughout the atoll. The craters are approximately 300 feet in diameter and 30 feet deep at the center. Entombment is a considerably cheaper means of disposal of contaminated material than ocean dumping of encapsulated modules or shipment back to the United States. Entombment is expected to be more acceptable to the Environmental Protection Agency. The radiation hazards on Runnet will be lowered by removing high concentrations of radioactivity throughout the island. The draft environmental impact statement was presented in early September by General Johnson to the Eniwetok people, their legal representatives and officials of the trust territory. It is the basic document derived from all the surveys, studies, and planning efforts. 
it presents the prime case for returning the Eniwetok people to their homeland, considering acceptable levels of radiation and living patterns. The Eniwetok people have played an important part in the development of these plans for cleanup and rehabilitation. After cleanup, the final condition of the atoll will impose some restrictions on its use. The people will be prohibited from residing on the northern islands, including Enjibi. Certain restrictions must also be placed on types and locations of crops and gathered foods. The schedule calls for cleanup operations to last two years. Work will proceed on several islands at the same time. This approach is brought about by the high overhead costs in insular environments. We plan to use the Corps of Engineers as the construction agent with a small DNA task group on site to coordinate and control the overall operation. At the time of our fiscal 75 budget request, the total cleanup cost was estimated at $37 million. It has since increased to about $40 million due primarily to more stringent radiological cleanup criteria and overall increased cost factors, such as fuel prices. DNA has requested 14 million in the fiscal 76 military construction budget to initiate the cleanup. Delay in beginning the cleanup will result in more rapid deterioration and will increase the cost of the holding operation and make the rehabilitation of base facilities more costly once the cleanup is authorized and funded. Rehabilitation in the form of housing, the concerned efforts of numerous agencies of the United States government can fulfill their hope of returning to their homeland after more than three decades.